It is official. Rick It Ralph 2 is going to come in 2018. And I can't wait to watch it. Anyways, guys, welcome back to Asagawa Academy. Um, I just wanted to point that out. And so basically, uh, my mom fixed my sound so that um, the freaking volume isn't too low. Um, anyways, when we last left off, um, <clears throat> Mai was talking about um, Hana and Pro Jared. <laughs> I'm not even gonna say it. Okay. Um, <laughs> you're totally crazy. I I don't know what you're talking about. Miss Shizuka, like some kind of angel, cleared her throat at the at, at the front of her class. I I exhaled gratefully. Everything. <laughs> right as I start the video, I can't speak or read apparently, and sunk down in my seat. When class finally ended, Mai and I headed for the cafeteria. The incident forgotten in her hurried attempt to explain Miss Shizuka's scandalous last relationship. Seriously, you spent all this all this time trying to choose between her and some dead chick who only liked him because he looked like her, her ex-boyfriend. I mean, who does that? I don't know. We got our food and hesitated in the middle of the room, looking at the normal booze table. Neither of us wanted to go up and demand a seat, especially after wriggling our way in the in the day before. What if they change their minds? I saw she noticed us standing like lost lambs in, in the middle of the room and waved over, us over. Can you guys hear my voice? Probably. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but Sasha started like, hey girl, how, how was class? Oh, you know, normal. Slash nodded and turned away, having been in the middle of talking to Josh. That was awkward. Despite how familiarly he treated me, I didn't. I still didn't know how to talk to him or any of them. I looked across the table and locked eyes with PBT, who stared at me like I was a baby German Shepherd. You. All right. Cookies. What? what? Oh, you brought us cookies. You're the best, Gerard. Paul sprang out of his desk and practically tackled Gerard. Well, calm down, there's there's more than enough cookies to go around. Gerard started passing cookies around the table but paused. Hmm? Ew. You're back again? He looked at Mai and me and I tried to ignore the disappointment on his face. Well, well here. He handed us each a cookie, then then headed back across the cafeteria. I stared at the small chocolate chips melting in the warm cookie. Did he not want us here? But, but he was so nice yesterday. I didn't even want to eat the cookie. Not if he was going to be as two-faced as that. Hey! Watch where you're... Wa yeah, watch where you're ne... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Watch where you're walking next time! A sheep as Gerard stood next to a short skinny boy who was holding his tray above his head. I'm sorry, I'll be more careful. Oh, you. Oh, you. You're from the Normal Boots Club. Wait. You're the guy who plays with itty bitty kitties, aren't you? The boy sneered. <laughs> How the hell did you manage to get in a group with. Get in, a gr get in with a group like that? Huh? Hmm? They're my friends. Playing with those stupid dolls. You're an embarrassment. The kids' friends were hitting the shoulders looking for Gerard. From Gerard to our table with panicked eyes. I like what I like. I think they're fun. <laughs> Whatever. The boy was let off by his friends. Gerard came back and sat down at the table. <laughs> that was weird. Gerard sat down and began happily munching on his cookie, looking for all the world like he didn't even care about what just happened. I scanned the cafeteria for the boy who heckled him and found him sitting alone at a table, hands in his he headed his in his hands. His friends left them behind. What was that about? Oh, that? I used to get it get it all the time. I collect itty bitty kitty figurines. You know, that kid show with the five kittens who live in kitten town. That's a reference to My Little Pony. They were originally supposed to have magical powers, but whatever. I collect their figurines. They're so cute. I've almost got them all. I'm only, I'm only missing Princess Pumpernickel. She's the rarest. But why was that guy making fun of you? Does it bother you? 
I was afraid of bringing up bad feelings, but Gerard just shook his head. It looks kind of weird, right? A teenage boy collecting toys meant for little girls? But I like them, so don't, so I don't let it bother me. Sorry, I didn't bring enough cookies for the first time, Hana. I forgot that you were joining us again, but I'm glad you're here. I bit my lips. See, Hana? He was being nice the whole time, and here you were jumping to conclusions. Here your, hey, your cookie will, hey, your cookie will get cold if you don't eat it. I unwrapped the cookie. Sense of chocolate and cinnamon hit me. I broke off a piece and popped it in my mouth. Gerard whispered something into Nick's ears, who started laughing so hard milk came out of his nose. Was he really okay with people making fun of him? I couldn't believe it. I didn't believe it. At my old school, people made fun of me every day. It was hell. There was no way he could just brush it off like that. Not when I tried to so hard to do it. Th Not when I tried so hard to do the same. But as I finished the cookie and started on my ramen, and Gerard continued to laugh with the rest of the marble boots, I wondered whether it was it was as impossible as I always thought. Anna, can you pass me some pepper? I got it! Here, Jared! Thanks. Uh, what's your name again? It's Mai. Thanks, Mai. Poor Mai. Hana! Will Hana ready to head back? Huh? Oh, yeah. Did Mai look sad? Or did I imagine it? Jared, why won't you notice Mai? He threw... <laughs> I'm sorry. We threw our trays on... We, we threw our trays on the rack and headed out to the cafeteria. As we whipped in the normal boots and Jared... Gerard... Gerald... Gerald, I waved back. A sudden pang hit my stomach. Was it guilt? After class ended that day, Mai said she had a vo vo volleyball practice and sped off. Thankfully this time, I knew where I was going, so I headed straight back and collapsed on my bed. It was nice to have some time to myself. After everything that happened, I felt like I was going crazy. I could I could use some relaxation. I didn't have a computer or a TV, and the book Sag gave me was really good, but sometimes I got a bit hard to read. Instead, I took out my phone and started flipping through the app store. Hmm. Nothing really good, good looking. Wait, what was this? I sat up. Dumba Doom's Revenge. Face off against three other players as you catch monsters, raise them, and, they, and use their unique skills to aid you on your puzzle solving quest. Only you can save Meta World from its ignorant king and utter destruction. Now, with the single player campaign, raise crops to feed your monsters. If you're lucky, they'll transform into cute girls. What the hell? <laughs> it looks so stupid, but. It couldn't hurt to give it a try. I downloaded and started up the game. Welcome to Dumbo Doom's Revenge! I skipped the intro sequence. Oh my god. <laughs> this reminds me of something. Ugh. It kinda reminds me of Mega Man. Ugh. It quickly hit single player loading. The load times were terrible. Suddenly, a cartoonish hill hilly valley met my eyes, panning over to a white castle. N nestled next to a cliff. A lazy king. Hold on a second. <laughs> let me, let me, um. Which is, holy crap, the music is loud. <laughs> okay. A lazy king slay asleep on, on a, bleh, 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 on a, on a throne. Throne when a squat silver soldier ran into the room. King Dumbledore, Cricket, we're under attack. Oh, just send the first battalion off, please. I'm rather tired. The night left, and the screen faded to a world map showing a horde of the black blobs on the right side of the screen. A small group of knights ran up against the blobs and were instantly devoured. One of the black blobs spit out a helmet with a skull inside. What the, what the heck is this game? I don't want to curse this time. Things continued in this... In this way, with the king sending off his battalions ha half haphazardly until no one was left. Then the king awoke in his chair and turned to the screen. You! <gasps> and me? Only you can save my kingdom, please! I don't think I can save your kingdom. 
You were the one menacing it. That's true. How dare you! What the heck? Could this thing cure me? You are no longer my adversary. A advisor. <laughs> go back to go, go back to your home village and let me deal with this myself. A tiny sprite with bl brown hair flew across this world map, bouncing into a bush of red houses. I guess my only choice is to raise an army of monsters myself, overthrow the king, and then and then raise an army to fight the up oncoming bloopity blue. <laughs> Why did you come to that conclusion? <laughs> Finally, I was allowed to play the actual game. I, I, a dozen multicolored blocks appeared on the screen. The monsters when it were was initially given, given could only hit their corresponding colors and wasn't and couldn't activate any traps. Suddenly, more monsters could eventually learn how to set traps, and you could do certain combos to hinder the opposing team. If you had an attractive girl on your team, she could use an ability to double the rate of your opponent's blocks, or half the, their clock time. But that had a drawback for you too, and could be used, at, used as an asset by the opponent. Not to mention that certain color combinations between girls and monsters activate unique secret abilities, and you could use, also evolve your monsters and feed them things. How the heck am I supposed to remember all of this? Yep. <laughs> I failed the first few times, but quickly got the hang of it. It was just about being adaptable and maintaining a flexible strategy, after all. My eyes started to hurt, and I looked at the time. Eight o'clock? It's been- it's been four hours. it'd been four hours? I had reading to do! I grabbed my textbook and flip, flipped my radio on and began to read. There'd be many tales of times where, when the moon has fallen on other planets, and the most popular of these being- being the myth of term- Oh, I'm so happy. Because <laughs> there's a Majora's Mask reference in this. Oh my god. Oh, I'm sorry, but I really, really love Majora's Mask. If you have not um, seen my other um, past videos. However, these myths have have never been proven to more than a hallucination. That's a map pad. <laughs> my eyes blurred over my astronomy textbook and I yawned. The, sh the Shibber... The shibber, the shib, whatever. Peace floating from my radio made me want to go to sleep, and I toyed with the idea of going to class without finishing my reading. Who cared how many times the moon was supposed to fall, especially when time travel was involved? <laughs> Hana! My burst burst in through the door, flung herself across the room, and grabbed my radio. Hey, hey where have you been? <sighs> what are you doing? Give me a sec, we're missing it. <laughs> there we go. But I swear, that dog was the living worst. That's why you need a bird, like my lovely jock. Watch your tongue. What is this? <sighs> Shh! Hey. So, the time... So, the time has come to make an, an, an official announcement. This year, just like every other year, the Normal Boots Club will, will be participating in the video game tournament. Yeah. Woohoo! Yay! As PBG applauded, as... As though he were a crowd, he were a crowd of thirty people. I shot, I shot a puzzled glance at my. I hope you guys will support us again this year, and best of luck to our competitors. You guys are going down. And now for some music. My turn down the radio inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, what did you want? Um, what was that? PB and J. It oh I wish it was PB and Jeff, <laughs> cause um, cause of uh Peanut Butter Gamer's gameplay channel where he's doing this series called PB and Jeff. It's P it's PBG and John's radio. They have a radio show. What did they do in it? Oh, you know they talk and stuff and play music sometimes. Everyone in school listens to it. I'm so glad you bought your radio and I forgot mine at home. And our gameplay tournament? I mean, video game tournament? Yeah. <clears throat> Wrong voice. <laughs> yeah, didn't you hear them talking about it the other day? No. Come to think of it, I hadn't paid much attention to the conversations. I was way too busy, but busy worrying about myself. Every year, they have a game tournament down at Hagenbana ha 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 Wait, how many tournament points? Five. That's fine then. Every year, they have a game tournament down at 
he can buy them all. Lots of people come to complete, compete, but everybody knows the real fights between the normal boots club and the hidden black club. Is that what they do? Video game tournaments? Yeah, that's why nobody ever joined them s since their inception. Well, I guess partly the partly their group of friends who just happen to make a gl club together, but also, unless you're really talented, you just drag them down. Ouch. Not all of them are so harsh, but some of them, well... Maya glanced away, but I felt like I, I knew she, who she was talking about. That's too bad. The conversation I had before with Jimmy and Caddy came up to mind. Had they really thought I was joining the Normal Boots Club? There was no way. I hadn't played a video game since I was a kid. My father gave me a 4DS when I left home, but... Flashback. The night before I left home for, Masag for Asagao, my, my dad came to visit me in my room. I packed the few things I owned into a briefcase and a single cardboard box t set to be shipped with the train. I sat and stared at the box, somewhat bitter. I barely even needed it. I don't... I didn't own much. Oh no. Yeah, Dad? My father stood in front of me, a wary smile on his face. Even though he tried to hide it, I could see the deep wrinkles around his eyes and forehead that he was tired, sad. The past few years had taken their toll on him, and I hadn't eased things. You will be leaving tomorrow. Yeah. A heavy sigh hung between us, fill filling my childhood bedroom like a styrofoam. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah, I am. He nodded and glanced around the room, the pale blue walls, the broken clock above my old desk, the scuff marks around the door frame from where I ran into it as a child. I lived in this house for almost my life, my whole life, ever since moving after kindergarten. It was everything I knew, but now it was too much for me. The decision to transfer to Asagawa didn't come lightly. First, it was a pre prestigious in institution with a highly prized reputation. Only the best of the best, tooting, tooting either great grades, impressive talent, or lots of money could get in. I was none of those things, but I made it regardless. Part of me suspected I was a charity case. I received a small scholarship, and it was, and it would no doubt look good for the academy to have fostered a poverty-stricken child in its walls. And despite the fact that my father couldn't couldn't afford it, even with the scholarship, he guaranteed he'd s support me if it, if I went. I looked again. That I looked again at at the wrinkles in his face, as it, at his sagging shoulders. He pressed his hand against my body to hide the way they shook. For me, all for me, he'd been all alone. I'm glad you're going. I think this will be good for you. Yeah. I wish I could say something else, but nothing came. Well, honey, just in case you get homesick, I bought a present for you. A, a present? From his pocket, my dad pr produced a shining pink Gintendo 4DS and placed and placed it into my hands for you. But why? How? Dad, this costs so much. You're already killing yourself to let me go. Why would you? Tears spilled from my eyes as my dad smiled. Nothing is too good for you, my dear Anna. His voice was trembling. You're my pride and joy. You deserve so much better than you've gotten from me. Dad. Go to Asagawa. Have fun. Make a lot of friends. When you get homesick, you play with that. I'll make do. I stood up and hugged. Oh, this making me sad. I stood up and hugged him, burying my face in a scratchy sweater, and oatmeal smell. I'll miss you. I'll miss you. But the thing is, waiting for the text to scroll. He forgot to give me a cartridge to play with. Oh. Now I glanced at the machine, hidden behind my desk lamp. 
My watched me carefully. Well, you, you never know what could happen. What? What do you mean? <laughs> My giggled. Nothing, nothing at all. But I just got back, so I've got work to do. <gasps> work, right. PBG and I still had a project due, and we hadn't meant to discuss it at all. He said he, he had it under control, but I should probably get, make a backup plan, just in case. Sonya! <laughs> She's always texting me whenever I'm making these videos! Can't talk. Making. Video. Okay. Um. It wasn't that I didn't trust him, it was just. Okay, I didn't trust him. <laughs> Sighing. I, I worked a kink out of, my sh out of my shoulder. It looked like it would be a long night. Actually, hold on a second. I'm back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> someone knocked on the door. Okay. Uh, what was that noise? Stop it, please. Uh, I'm coming. Who on earth would do this so early? So early in the morning, in fact, I, it wasn't even light out. I quietly padded o over to the door. My shifted in her bed. What? What? <laughs> Probably didn't need to say that. <laughs> Joshua Lena. That's good. It's about time. Who? Oh, honey. He... She... Pushed past me and swept into the room. Flipping on the light switch, Paul and Nick followed after him. <laughs> Anna, I feel just terrible for ruining your uniform. Sincerely, we owe you an apology and a clean uniform. I'm not so good at that, that kind of thing, so I brought a friend to help me. Josh pulled open my drawer and tossed out clothes left and right. <gasps> oh my god, stop! That's my underwear! What's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't get over that. I ran, I ran to him and grabbed his arm, trying to pull him away. These panties are so cute. They're perfect for you. Get away from there! Where's your uniform? I ducked below Josh and pulled open a drawer, pulling out the sticky, uh, sticky fabric. Here, take it! I threw it at Josh's face, but he caught it with ease. This is no problem. Oh, I promise I'll have this cleaned in no time, girls. He snapped. Follow me. Paul, Nick, and Josh swept from swept from my room, but they didn't head towards the hall exit. Instead, they turned, heading deeper into the dormitory. I didn't have a good feeling about this. I stepped into my slippers and ran into the hallway, just in time to see the door to the girls' bathroom <gasps> close. Oh no. What are you doing in here? I sprinted. I sprinted to the bathroom door before I could get there. Paul, Nick, I had to make the sound effect because there wasn't a sound effect. <laughs> Paul, Nick, Paul and Nick slammed into the wall across from the door. Men like you are the worst. Whoa. No, th this is all just a misunderstanding. Please. I'm sure it was. No, Mamie, it really was. Wait a second. Where's the other uh, person who was with them? She's doing something with with a uniform in the sink. <laughs> Mamie tossed her head with a sniff <laughs> and headed back into the bathroom. She actually thinks Josh is a girl, even though she has a. <laughs> I had to point that out. Even though she has a beard, <laughs> she wouldn't be the first. He, she wouldn't be the first. Josh himself, himself believes he's a girl. That wig is magical. <sighs> well, stay out of the girls' bathroom. It's not exactly going to help your platform if word gets around that you are a pervert. A shadow fell, ab fell over Paul's face. I sighed. Don't worry, he'll talk to Mimi. Go back to the door boys' dorm. All right. Thank you so much, Hana. 
Yeah, yeah. I watched him scamper away, then headed into the bathroom. Hey, Josh, Lena? Hmm? You and I should probably get going. I rounded the... I rounded the corner and found him doing Mimi's hair. Uh... In a second, Hana. I just got to finish this. Hana, have you met... Have you met Joshua... Joshua Lena? She was so... She's so good with hair. And look, she even got the... Got the stain out of this shirt. Mimi held up my uniform. Really? Really? Thank goodness. Thank you so much. It's no problem, honey. I guess I'll let you finish. Mimi, you won't tell anyone about Paul and Nick coming into the bathroom, will you? Why wouldn't I? Well, as class re representatives, they were just trying to help Joshua Lena get her bearings, and they were showing her where the bathroom was. I should have been the one to show her, but I was asleep and they didn't want to wake me up. Oh, well, I guess it's fine then. Thank you. I stood staring at them, unsure what to do next. Do you mind? I need to concentrate to finish this. Oh, I'm sorry. Anyways, I'm going to end it off here, and, um, next episode. Day five. Okay, so I see you guys next video. The Triforce be with you, and, um, yeah.